So here we are with episode 11 of the Family Circumstances of the Irregular Witch. Last episode, whoo boy, it was painful. I totally forgot what happened in the first half of that episode. Oh, something about the sun, yeah. <laughs> and in this episode, I believe there's going to be three different scenarios, so we'll just have to see what's going on there. If you guys like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. I do have my full length up on Patreon in early access to non-seasonal and some seasonal shows like this one on the YouTube membership. Other than that, let us get started. Oh, he's house-sitting? I obey. Uh, hopefully nothing bad happens uh, with him and the fucking koala. Whose name I currently can't remember. Screech? Is that what it is? Oh, shit. They be fighting last time. Screechy. I did not think we would meet again. Tiny life form. Damn, dude. He does obey. Oh, shit. Ooh! Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, what are you fucking blaming me for, man? <laughs> it's like picking up a child. <laughs> if you struggle so much, I'm gonna fucking drop you. <laughs> it's like a baby, dude. <laughs> A violent child, that's for sure. <laughs> Maybe it's just hangry. Oh, put a little bib on him and everything. Give him some pancakes. Although he's gonna eat yours as well. It's making s- <laughs> I shall not trade. <laughs> Damn, he's got the zoomies, dude! <laughs> he's swift as the wind. Damn, making cracks in here? Holy shit, he's just- Can we just unsummon him? He's a giant little brat! This is like the easiest animation they've got so far. They didn't even have to like, <laughs> move the mouth or anything. I mean, the koala doesn't even have a fucking mouth. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's going to- Oh no, it's going to play the victim! Oh no! Oh, it's- It's a fucking baby dog, that's for sure. Calm thyself. Dude, that's a lot of clean. <laughs> I hope we last that long. Jesus fucking Christ, as I said, can we, uh, unsummon that thing? <laughs> With your song. Oh no, he can't even clean up. You think he has claws? <laughs> what? What? What are you blaming him for? Oh, oh, fucking death blow, dude. <laughs> I quit, dude. Understandable. That's how uh, the uh, the uh, the eldest sibling feels. <laughs> the youngest sibling fucks everything up, and then the parents come home and they blame the fucking eldest for not looking after the youngest. <laughs> Also, I wouldn't know, because I'm the youngest. <laughs> Ooh, fun! Damn, just took the whole thing. <laughs> how did it how did it just slip through his mouth? Damn, dude. Delicious. Damn, dude. This is all this fucking sweet. Is she Is she just trying to fucking get a reaction for him? He just eats it. Ooh, damn, he's a He's a fucking chubby boy. He's thicker than before. <laughs> Damn, he's so round. <laughs> he's rounder than usual, sorry. Even his neck was like... <sighs> Alyssa's such a grandmother. 
She has her mom goggles on. What are you losing weight for? <laughs> oh my god, look at all that fat around him. <laughs> oh wow, the feeling of youth right there. For one year? Holy shit! <laughs> Is that Kickler? <laughs> Why don't we just fucking cut the fat right out of him? Just pump it right out. <laughs> Suction or excise any fat. See, look, she's <laughs> easy, dude. Easy peasy. Ah. Have you been watching them? Did also Yeah, I was <laughs> she's been watching them. <laughs> Dude, Phoenix running is just going to shake the ground. <laughs> Outside. <laughs> she's the one giving the exercise stuff. <laughs> and maybe you prove your habit. When the fitness instructor is <laughs> running out of breath. <laughs> the fact that Phoenix doesn't even have hands. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god, his voice. <laughs> I've never seen him so agile. <laughs> He's fucking... Damn, you fucking work. <laughs> Holy shit. If he's floating, is he really running? Create avatars out of his fat. Is that the same way as just suctioning the fat out of him? <laughs> We're gonna see him swim. He's gonna swim. He just became water? <laughs> I understand the reason, but oh my god. He's ringing himself. Wow, that is. Y'all exercise in these clothes? Like, <laughs> Alyssa's wearing a corset. <laughs> Where is his wings? Like,. <laughs> That's something I would never do. <laughs> yeah, sure. I may be deprived. <laughs> Still got a job to do. Are you getting paid? Oh, actually, no, I forgot. They're getting this for free. <laughs> Damn, dude. Damn, he lost all that weight. Oh, he lost too much weight. <laughs> Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> oh, 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 You think you have that? <laughs> yes, it's the fucking psychopath in violence. Having gay means being liked. <laughs> the world's full of guys who can't do it. Wow. <laughs> So she, she just turned you into <laughs> <laughs> For Ari, it's literally <laughs> 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 
<laughs> female emotions <笑>いや、ちょっとボーサブ。<笑><笑><笑><笑> Yeah, I'm, I don't know about just immediately going into <laughs> I'll fucking cut off your arm. <laughs> but are you guys actually gonna learn it? Oh no, she's gonna see her dad. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so you know how it feels to be a woman. <laughs> You're my toys now. <laughs> uh oh. Damn. Disappointed, Alyssa. Oh. <laughs> well, well, well. Well, those uh, those were three nice uh scenarios. I enjoyed them all. Rather. I like them all rather equally. Maybe I I, I, th I do enjoy the second one a little bit more. But I was very surprised with the, the last one, right? With Ari. Because I thought it was going to be a little cringe. But he actually came out and give good advice and everything. <laughs> Alright. That's it. That's the ending. <sighs> Alright. Well. Um. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to go back to the center. <laughs> Alright, so that was episode 11 of the Family Circumstances of the Irregular Witch. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you guys. For me, I thought that this was a pretty nice episode. Uh, the three segments were very fun. And again, as I said, the last segment that I thought was going to be a little cringe uh, turned out to be, <laughs> you know, actually good advice. I mean, Ari is literally like, hey... Treat them like normal human- treat these women like normal human beings, alright? <laughs> and you know what? If that's how he- that's how he treats uh, the ladies out there, you know? No wonder he got- no wonder he got game. <laughs> but going into the first scenario, which is Phoenix and uh, Screechy having their own alone time. I, I, I think I already talked about it, where this whole scenario is basically the older brother having to take care of the bratty younger brother. <laughs> who's just out here making a mess, crying and shit. And so, you know, Phoenix is trying his best to do everything, but towards the end after Screechy makes all this mess and Phoenix couldn't uh Phoenix couldn't clean it all up before <laughs> before the parent comes home and of course the parent would blame the older sibling for not taking care of the younger sibling right <laughs> immediately put the blame on the older sibling and it's <laughs> And I love that Phoenix just, you know, he just fucking freezes up and then he falls and he's just like I, I quit being the senior. I don't want to be the elder brother anymore. <laughs> Fantastic, dude. Fantastic. I, I think that pretty much sums up how 
uh, how, how, how the oldest sibling would feel. <laughs> and in the second segment, we got to see Phoenix being a, being a cute little chubby boy. Actually, I've realized that's his wing right there. It's just that when you see him, like, frontal like this, right? Not from the side. <laughs> you can't even see his wing. <laughs> you can't even see anything. <laughs> Dude, he gets so fucking fat that, like, his usual neck, which is, like, you know, the usual neck like a human would. It's just the size of his head now, too. <laughs> this boy, so far, he's so, he's so thick out here, dude. He's, he's extremely thick. But we did get to see... Uh, Dr. Kikla, it's, uh, it's which I thought was very nice. I love that she just crashes through the window. <laughs> very fun. And I, I, I love that as she tells them about, well, first of all, she recommended surgery. <laughs> they just fucking suck the fat right out of him. <laughs> and she gets to keep his fat. So it's a, it's a win-win for both people, right? <laughs> but I love that she talks about their... Uh, she she talks about their diet and everything, right? Like, oh, you've been you've had been having too much cream in your diet. There's too much cream in in your desserts and all that. You guys have been using croissants for your bread. Maybe you use bagels instead. <laughs> and Viola's is like, ah, oh, okay, that's it. You know, understandable. This whole diet stuff. Meanwhile, Alyssa's just like, holy shit, how does she know this? <laughs> Yo, Kikla is just out here watching them. There's a y'all got a fucking stalker for a doctor. You know, which you know kinda has its benefit, kind of. She's out here stalking y'all and all, but like it kinda means that she's always there uh, uh, in the times that you need a doctor. <laughs> or at the very least if Phoenix needs a doctor anyways. <laughs> But yeah, I thought it was pretty nice to just see uh, Phoenix do <laughs> Dude, you get to just see his little, like, fat blub and everything, you know, his, his little blubber. We also get to see Kikla, who's starting to look like Phoenix. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, it's, uh, overall, this is a nice episode just to see uh, Phoenix and his, um, I don't know, agility, I guess. I do enjoy the sit-ups. <laughs> and then the back extension. Damn, dude. <laughs> If he keeps doing that, he looks like he's twerking out here, yeah? <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. But towards the end, we see that Kikla is out here doing her work. <laughs> giving them, like, the daily exercises that they need. And then we've got Phoenix who comes out and uh, he's like, Oh, I apologize. I thought you were just trying to take advantage of me, right? Doing this whole exercise thing in order to take advantage of me, to, to touch me and all that. But Kikla, you know, she's like, Look, I may be a degenerate. <laughs> I may be deprived, but I'm still a doctor. <laughs> still got a job to do, you know? <laughs> and, you know, oddly enough, after the way that they introduced Kikla and how she kind of made it look like it's a soap opera, right? It's like a weird love triangle that she has with, uh, with Phoenix. The way that they kind of have Phoenix, well, going, uh, see, greeting up, uh, greeting her behind, from behind, right? And him, uh, again, just, uh, talking about how, like, you know, it's a, I, I, I thought that you were just going to be a little creep, but you were actually doing your job and all that. And, like, they have this, like, sunset, and everything <laughs> I was just I was thinking I was like you know it oddly feels it oddly could it, it could feel like it's a uh, it came out of a uh, romance scene <laughs> if you know <laughs> the romance was between a doctor and a giant orange blob <laughs> I enjoy that after one month of exercise he becomes even tinier and now they have to get him fatter again <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. Phoenix out here, he lose and gain weight so easily. <laughs> and this takes us on over to the final segment, the final scenario between uh, Fennel, Glynn, and Ari. Alright, Fennel and Glynn are just two virgin boys who can't get a date. And so Glynn decides that he's going to ask Ari, who has so much game 
And uh, again, I initially thought that this was going to be cringe and that Ari, well, I mean, he does kind of give off that vibe that he is like a, a player, like a pickup artist. So I was just like, it kind of feels like two incels going to a pickup artist <laughs> to ask for advice and getting really bad advice. But no, I, I, I think that I, I do, uh, you know, when it comes to this series for the most part i mean i i think fenno and glenn kind of played their part pretty pr pretty pretty straightforward but there are characters who have elements that goes against what they should be and here in this case for ari right i thought that he was going to be the pickup artist in this situation but no he comes in and he gives really he, he gives genuinely good advice <laughs> and i was just like that's that's pretty cool. And I, I love that Ari is able to give these advices because he he became a woman for two weeks. So he's <laughs> he was literally in the shoe of a woman. <laughs> he, he really took that advice literally. You know, you don't really know how a person feels or how, what a person goes through until you walk in their shoes. <laughs> and in this case... <laughs> Very fun. I, I thought that that was very funny. Uh, again, all of the advices that Ari gives out is very good. He's just over here like, hey, you have to have sympathy for the other person. By ha having game is to... Well, hold on. Let me... If I could find where he says it. It sounds like you two think having game is a special skill. Having game means being liked. <laughs> In other words, it refers to having good human relationships and being sympathetic is what makes relationships go well. I it's just like, yeah, there you go. All right? He kind of just goes out because like a lot of guys have this uh, have this idea that it is a fucking skill branch that, that you need to get into. And it's just, I just, I just want to learn how to flirt with the ladies. And so because of that, people, uh, men like... <laughs> like Fennel and Glenn, specifically Glenn, honestly, would go to these sort of lessons, right? Go to pickup artists who would tell them, hey, man, if you take my class, you're gonna learn how to pick up all the women. And, and so they, they, would get into, they would get sucked into these sort of classes and they would like pay millions upon millions, not millions, sorry, they're not millionaires, but they would pay thousands of dollars to these people thinking that they are going to learn this fucking skill in order to uh, learn how to <laughs> learn how to pick up women. When in reality, the, the things that they're being taught is more or less going to lessen their chances with the ladies, which then makes them want to take the classes more. It's just a it's it's just a giant fucking scam and then eventually a lot of guys kind of get into a sunk cost fallacy. So then they kind of keep doing it. And it's uh it's 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 unfortunate, right? It's and I have a <laughs> I have a friend who before he got into a long relationship with his current girlfriend now, right? But before he had gone into that relationship, he ha he he is able to go around and uh I, I as Ari says, right, have game. And the reason why he does that is exactly what Ari says. He just treats he just treats the women around him like normal people. He has sympathy for them. He's able to make conversation. He's able to make jokes. A and because of that, he's able to <laughs> pick up ladies and such. So, <laughs> well, when I when I see Ari, I'm just like, yeah, you know, I I think that's a you know that that's how my friend that that's how my friend is. <laughs> I'm still thinking about the time when. <laughs> I, I, I'll never forget this time where we were both at an event and he was single at the time so he was willing to, you know, have like a fun one-nighter with, uh, you know, with, with some women who were there and he managed to get two girls and, and there was supposed to be like this dance that was going to happen at the end of the final, um, of, of the final convention. Uh, the final day of the convention, there was supposed to be like a ball, like a dance sort of thing, and <laughs> both both women invited him to it, and I thought it was so funny. Like I I never go to the fucking ball, but I would have loved it if he took up the offer and tried to do both of them at the same time. <laughs> Try to dance. <laughs> it would have been some fucking comedy shit, and I would have had 
a, a gr it was it, it probably would have been cringe and like it probably would have just gone down the fucking toilet but it would have been fantastic it would have been very funny <laughs> unfortunately it, it 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 never it, it never happened because our other friend was not feeling good right he was um is uh yeah he, he just wasn't feeling good and so we decided instead of going to the ball we're going to go to where he is and hang out with him instead so yeah the <laughs> that chance never happened but man in in another world in an alternative universe <laughs> It probably was going to be very fucking fringe. <laughs> but again, yeah, that's, uh, again, with what Ari says, truly is the, not even like the, the secret technique or the secret skill or, or whatever, right? There, there's no secret in, in any of these. All you really need to do is to just treat these women like normal people, it, it, which also kind of goes into that whole idea of like the friend zone. I, I do joke about it sometimes, but when I see that like men talk about the friend zone and all that, it kind of feels like, okay, she friend zoned me. And it's just like, well, you're so you're basically saying that you only got into this relationship with the woman because you want to sleep with her, which is uh, it's, it's awful because a lot of uh, women who feel like they have a lot of gen a genuine relationship with like, you know, people of the opposite sex and then they find out that the only reason why this person was friends with them in the first place was because they were hoping for a chance to sleep with them it is just like what <laughs> right it, it feels awful and so i i don't it, and, and so like i i don't like that thinking process that a lot of guys tend to have and uh what i feel is that hey if you find a if you are a man and you find a woman who you might find some interest in and then you know you guys have you know you guys end up being a in a good uh friend relationship and eventually you know if you find out that she's not interested in you then that's fine right it's not like you're losing anything you still technically won because you've got a friend Right? And hopefully you're able to foster this friendship with you, uh, with them. And, you know, maybe just by being friends with them, you get to meet more people, right? Who are friends with your friend. And then maybe eventually you might find other people. And I, I, I always, I, I always much enjoy that better, right? It's, it's, you didn't lose. You didn't get fucking put in the friends or anything. You still have a friend. <laughs> you still have a friend who can you know, introduce you to other friends. That being said, I, I, even though I like that idea, I feel like some guys might twist that and be like, oh, okay, well, since she's not gonna sleep with me, you know, she's gonna, <laughs> she's gonna introduce me to her other girlfriends, and then I'm gonna have more chances to sleep with those women, you know, I'm just, <laughs> I don't want it to be twisted like that. <laughs> I'm just saying is that, look, sometimes having friends is better. <laughs> but hey, I'm I'm a uh, I'm I'm fucking asexual. What I, what the fuck do I know? Am I right? <laughs> I can barely grasp when women flirt with me, <laughs> and when I do, it's gonna be like 15 hours later when I'm like separate and alone. I'm just like, huh? Was that what is that was that what she was doing? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then I just shrug it off. <laughs> Oh yeah, here's another one that Ari talks about to explain it simply enough for even you two to understand. So he walks up to Fenno, just fucking puts his hand on his head. I could crush your head with my bare hand. <laughs> Scary conversation starter. Yes, exactly. Men typically have more brute strength than women, so flirting wrong just inspires terror. <laughs> and it's just like, damn, dude. Again. He's really, he's, he's, he's fucking out here, dude, fucking speaking truth. Essentially, men will al always fall into the potentially dangerous category. <laughs> it's a self-preservation thing, so it's natural and, in and inevitable. You need to be aware of that and interact with them sincerely and on equal terms. There you go, it's like... <laughs> right? I, I also really like this from Ari as well, right? He's just like, look. You, you guys, for, uh, you know, men, for the most part, are a lot stronger than women, and that's just how the natural built is it's done, right? And so, because of that, if a woman is just out here 
walking on the street, <laughs> doing, you know, not really looking for a date or anything, and some dude just comes up to them in the, in the middle of the street and start flirting with them. It's just like, whoa, 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 hold on, holy shit. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and there's that inherent fear of uh, that women have that if they say no or if they they are going to be mean to the guy, they're going to get angry and they're going to get violent. And then if we really need to go a little bit deeper, right, a lot of guys are, I forgot what the name is essentially, but they're kind of like emotionally blind. <laughs> It's like colorblind, but they're emotionally blind, where a lot of guys don't really understand that there are different ranges of emotions, right? They only, they, they feel like there's only maybe some of, uh, uh, they, there might only be three modes of emotions that they can feel, happiness, sadness, and anger. And then because of that, they don't understand the ranges of emotions that they could have within those three emotions, right? They don't even know if they should have like other sort of emotions. <laughs> outside of those three and so uh, that's why i say emotionally blind they're just kind of <laughs> it's like colorblind right you can't see certain colors <laughs> but you know in terms of anger uh a, a lot of guys they are unable to understand that there are different ranges of anger which like you don't have to be fucking angry like raging angry all the time you could come to realize that you could be frustrated with someone right you could be a little irritated but you're not like full on i'm fucking angry and so because uh, a lot of guys are unable to do that which also kind of comes into <laughs> sorry I'm, I'm, I'm really just <laughs> <laughs> it comes into the way that the patriarchal system, uh, the society is shown, right? The way that this is how men are supposed to be. They're supposed to be stoic. They're not supposed to be crying when their loved one has died or whatever. Or at the very least, you know, the only times men can cry is if their family member dies. And even then, some other men or and, and women wouldn't even approve of men crying for their loved ones uh, in in their in, in a fucking funeral or even like mourning right like is some men aren't even able to mourn because that's like that's a weakness and like that's just not how men are and so that's just how a, a lot of men are raised unfortunately and then they become they 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 are emotionally blind anyways so because of that it go, going back to the whole flirting, th <laughs> men attempting to flirt with women thing. The reason why a woman would feel scared if a random man who could be like a whole foot taller than her or something comes up and tries to flirt with her and she feels afraid. Well, it's because the potential of that man being emotionally blind and not realizing that he could just be a little upset. Right? Instead of being full on angry, like, oh, this fucking bitch, how fucking dare she say no to me? <laughs> so there's that inherent fear of like, okay, if I say no to this man, he's going to get mad and he's going to fucking beat me or he's going to fucking kill me or, 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 or even in a, a worse off aspect, right? He's going to fucking start stalking me for, if it already hasn't come from an obsession in the first place. So... It's a, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big thing that's unfortunately still needs to be unraveled, you know? It's, uh, it's 2023, we're almost heading to 2024. Men, it's okay to cry, it's okay to have feelings, it's okay to feel feelings. It's okay to tell your, not just your bros, because that's also a phenomenon. <laughs> I'm gonna just keep ranting about this. It's also just a, there's also this phenomenon. Uh, well, it's an unfortunate situation where men are able to really talk about their feelings with other men, but they can't do it with like women, right? If they've got a girlfriend or something, they can't fully talk about their feelings to their girlfriend, but instead they'll talk to their bros about it instead. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's a whole can of worms, man. It's a whole can of worms. I could go about on this for a whole fucking hour, but let's not. Let's not. We're going to stop right there. <laughs> so, if I have anything else to say, I will write it in the description down below. Thank you guys for sticking around, and I will see you guys in the next episode.